You guys can all hear me? Yeah. All right, great. So uh, I am going to talk to you guys uh, today about uh, something called pen testing chat ops. Who here in the room actually knows what chat ops is? Raise your hand. Okay, so that's about the half. Of, of, of the half that raised their hand, is it because you saw my talk before? <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so chat ops is uh, basically a really good idea that I stole from uh, GitHub, <laughs> the company. And uh, it's basically uh, about a sort of a CTF-like workflow uh, that we use uh, for our pen testing company that works really incredibly for us. And I think also for those of you who also do pen testing here in this room, I think it might also uh, work really great for you guys. So, uh, but first, a tiny bit about uh, our company. So uh, we're a bit of a funny, uh, yeah, a, a kind of weird thing. Uh, what we are is, uh, first of all, a nonprofit uh, uh, computer security consultancy company. Uh, sounds a bit strange, but basically we're just a commercial front end for a nonprofit back end. The ba nonprofit back end we support is the uh, NLNet Foundation. But uh, that's actually not important for our story. Uh, what's important uh, for our story is that uh, we have a bunch of uh, pen testers that are actually distributed around the world, okay? Uh, we work purely with freelancers, and uh, the head of my pen test team, for example, is this Dutch guy who lives in Brisbane, Australia. That's far away. Uh, I've got some pen testers uh, that are located in, uh, well, of course, the majority of them are in the Netherlands and, and in Europe. Uh, I've also got staff members in the United States, uh, you know, so basically we've got pretty much every time zone covered, <laughs> you know, of course, which is both a blessing and a curse, right? I mean, it's a curse because, you know, it, it's really hard to have uh, all hands meetings, not that I like meetings anyway, but, uh, you know, but nonetheless, you know, uh, but, and it's a blessing because, of course, we can kind of go around the clock uh, working on stuff without overworking folks. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, but what, uh, oops, so the way that we actually work uh, in terms of uh, chat ops is uh, you can see right here, basically, there is a, uh, is a chat room. Um, you can see right here uh, a list of a number of the people uh, that are, are uh, you know, our staff members, uh, sometimes also uh, customers. And uh, basically, uh, we're using this tool called Rocket Chat. Okay? Raise your hand if you've ever used Slack. Okay, that's half the people here. So basically, Rocket Chat is an open source, self-hosted version of Slack. Uh, we absolutely love you know, Slack and its functionality, but of course, we are not planning on giving them our customers' pen test data. <laughs> you know, henceforth, we find a nice open source uh, version so we can host it ourselves. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, well, it means you basically have to set it up for yourself. And, uh, but it's actually been great because it's open source and we've actually been extending it. Now, chat ops uh, is basically a concept that was originated by GitHub, and GitHub also is a globally distributed company. So I think, they, I mean, they have some kind of office in, in Silicon Valley, but the entire rest of their personnel is located everywhere. So the way that they work is they've actually taken their entire DevOps, uh, and they've actually architected things as such so that they can do their entire DevOps operations from their chat room. Okay, with the idea that they can literally, uh, you know, deploy deploy new VMs, patch things, uh, basically do all kinds of different upgrades, uh, configuration changes, all, all the usual DevOps, you know, Chef Puppet, Puppet Ansible, you know, <laughs> the usual DevOps stuff. Uh, but the thing is, they use this chat bot that's called Hubot, H-U-B-O-T. Uh, essentially, it's just a, a chat bot that you can also use in IRC. Uh, you can also use it in, you know, in Campfire Slack, you know, a whole bunch of other uh, different uh, chat channels. And the way that they actually had it set up was that you could basically uh, you know, do all those uh, you know, operations and be able to do new deployments to their website. I mean, literally, they have all kinds of continu continuous integration stuff you know, that, that's running out of the chat. They have network monitoring stuff that's going into the chat. <laughs> you know, so that a distributed team can actually have full visibility on what each other is doing. Well, you know, when, when I heard about them doing this, I was like, well, first of all, I said, uh, this actually sounds a lot like how a distributed CTF team works. <laughs> Because, uh, of course, actually a lot of what we do at ROS is, is uh, inspired by Capture the Flag. <laughs> and, uh, 
you know, the, and for the rest, uh, you know, I figured, you know, this would actually really work great for pen testing. <laughs> you know, for basically having a distributed team and trying to make things visible. Another thing also that is sort of an added bonus is uh, with radically open security, we also have this, uh, this thing that, you know, we're really big on openness and transparency. What that means in practice is that we actually invite our customers to join us in the chat room. Now, the really nice thing about chat ops is it means that anytime we're working, as long as we're actually launching our pen testing and launching our reporting and launching all of our other thing, parts of our operations, it means that if the customer there is there in the chat room, they can actually observe everything we're doing, <laughs> which actually has led to a really good formula that customers are extremely happy with, <laughs> you know, and, and that actually really having this kind of a chat integrated environment really enables which is actually much, much harder to do if you're just sort of working in the office, <laughs> you know, or using other kinds, of, uh, other kinds of tools. So I can give you guys some examples, basically, uh, of how this works. And first you can see right now that uh, with Hubot, so we basically renamed this uh, Rossbot, of course, <laughs> you know. And we have basically installed a whole bunch of different uh, tools uh, all kinds of different things that you can use from the chat. So it ranges from the totally useful, I mean things like, uh, you know, being able to uh, do uh, various kinds of, uh, you know, lookups of different kinds, who is is, and you know, <laughs> these kinds of things, to, you know, you know to, to being able to launch uh, scans, you know, for different kinds of pen testing, to, you know, the completely stupid and inane. Like, I mean, you can't have chat without, like, cat photos or XKTD, <laughs> you know. So we've actually got Hubot scripts uh, for all of this. So uh, we've also got uh, also sort of this uh, Rossbot shell command uh, that we're using for input sanitization because of course, yes, like the day I installed this, the first thing my guys tried to do was hack it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second thing they did was uh, Rossbot image me goatsy, at which point I was like, no. <laughs> No shock porn in the chat channel, please. <laughs> but um, anyway, so uh, <laughs> but but what that means is we can actually uh, the the way that it works is you use uh, CoffeeScript uh, to basically write uh, the integrations between whatever script you would want on the back end, and then uh, the chatbot, you know, the actual interface in the, in the chat, and then essentially you can write what the, your scripts on the back end in whatever language you're comfortable with. <laughs> so. Uh, so, you know, a really simple example of something that we've implemented is Nmap, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and it's basically nothing more than just being able to feed a certain number of parameters uh, to um, Nmap that are uh, supplied on the command line. Uh, of course, obviously, we do need to do input sanitization and do other forms of access control, because if, uh, especially if customers are in the channels with us, <laughs> we need to be a little bit careful about, uh, you know, who can actually operate which you know, commands within our chat environment. So, uh, yes, we thought about that as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, but there's a number of really uh, weird and wonderful things that we can do uh, from the chat. Now, anyone who's a pen tester knows that the most annoying part of pen testing is reporting <laughs> and documentation, you know? I mean, uh, you know, it's really time consuming, you know, I mean, we just want to hack the things, <laughs> you know? And then afterwards we're like, do we really have to write it up? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, of course, uh, us like any other uh, pen testing company, we of course build our, like a suite to automate this because, uh, you know, I mean, I know that there's still companies out there that are, you know, cutting and pasting things into Word documents, but uh, <laughs> I could, but I can tell you, <laughs> yeah, but I can tell you from like, you know, the first couple of months of uh, our, my company's existence before we had automation that, uh, you know, <laughs> that cutting and pasting stuff into open office is not what you want to do. <laughs> so, uh, so what we did is we wrote this XML suite. So what it is, is there's XML templates and uh, the pen testers can basically just fill in the templates. And they actually really like this because, uh, you know, it provides actually a structure for the pen testing and sort of reminds them of what kind of information they have to write down as they're actually doing the testing. And then uh, also another nice thing about with XML is if we have, for example, common uh, sort of what we call snippets. So, for example, commonly occurring uh, 
things like cross-site scripting. You always need the same description of like, okay, this is what cross-site scripting is, and this is how you remediate it. And you know, obviously, we don't want to re reinvent the wheel, so we have a little snippet library, uh, uh, which uh, actually pretty soon we should be open sourcing that. Uh, we're still kind of collecting all the snippets uh, together right now. But uh, basically, just so we can also kind of you know toss that uh, you know into our XML in the right place, and so that if you just you know compile, that it just sort of comes out correctly. So another thing about radically open security, by the way, is that we're really into open source. We love open source, and what that means is every tool and framework that we build, once it's ready for the light of day, we open source it. You know, I mean, so we basically just try to optimize for the amount of stuff we can like give away, just because we can. So, uh, so our XML uh, pen testing uh, suite is actually in, Git, in GitHub. So if you guys happen to have a pen testing company and you guys are still working with Microsoft Word or whatnot, <laughs> feel free uh, to steal our system and use it. Uh, it's actually extremely useful. If you guys also uh, want to do automated scanning within a big, huge mega corporation, you guys also need some kind of uh, you know, system, you can just basically steal our stuff, put in your own corporate logo, and it's actually really pretty easy to use. So uh, this is not yet official, by the way, but uh, we're actually having uh, discussions right now with OWASP about potentially trying to also make it an OWASP project. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this hopefully will be happening, I think, in the next, uh, you know, hopefully a couple of weeks. Uh, so, but that would actually be cool and, and further help to spread and canonize, you know, the, you know, the fact that this is sort of a free tool automation, you know, for everybody uh, who does web pen testing and other things. So uh, there's all kinds of documentation uh, that we've written that's actually quite uh, quite decent, uh, and you can sort of see right now it, it explains how uh, the reports are structured. Um, you can actually see right now an example of how we would be writing up the findings. So we've got uh, things like section uh, section ID, you know, different cross references. You can see up here sort of like title, you know, paragraphs, images, uh, you know, um, well, anyways, uh, stuff. So XML basically descriptions of uh, of what we're doing. And then uh, when we compile it, it uh, turns into something that looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that looks pretty good. <laughs> so, um, so what we do is we can actually, we've set things up so that you can actually compile this from our chat environment. So the way that it works is, and now we're going back to, uh, to rocket chat, is you can see now we've got this uh, raw spot shell command PDF build uh, customer name blurred out of course <laughs> you know uh, pen test and then at that point what uh, what what's happening is it says raw spot so first it's actually doing a git clone I should also mention by the way that we use GitLab as our primary uh, means of uh, version control and, and sort of collaborative editing <laughs> within ROS um, we use GitLab for our private stuff we use GitHub for our public stuff, obviously. <laughs> and we try, of course, to, to move stuff over from GitLab to GitHub as, as, as much as, as possible. So, but, uh, but what you can actually see is happening is that when you type in that command, the first thing that it's doing is it's uh, doing a clone from, git clone from the GitLab repo. Then what it's doing is it's actually calling the tool chain. So we're basically using uh, sort of XML, XSLT, uh, FOP, you know, that, that whole uh, system to basically generate our PDF. So you can see that it's, uh, uh, compiling the PDF, and then what is actually happening is it's actually committing the uh, PDF that was created back into the repo, okay? And then what it's doing is it's spitting out a link uh, to the PDF. So basically, uh, it, what it means is that uh, technical writers and pen testers don't even necessarily have to uh, install the tool chain on their local machines. A lot of them do. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, what it means is that uh, they can just issue a command in the chat, it compiles, it spits back a PDF, they click on it, they see it. Easy. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the way that we, uh, that we have things set up. So, so really, think a lot of things are just sort of, you know, interactions between, you know, from Rocket Chat to GitLab, you know, sort of, and back. Uh, another thing I should actually also mention that we've been doing, I don't have a slide about this, but we've been doing this uh, increasingly often, is also even using uh, uh, ro Rocket Chat and, and, and Chat Ops things also even more for not just like, you know, also for our tools, but also for project management. <laughs> and uh, we're actually using, uh, we're using Kanban internally uh, to manage our workflow for our entire pen testing uh, well, process, because of course we've got a lot of embers in the fire and we need to like, you know, <laughs> take care of them. 
So uh, what we're doing is we're also, we've even implemented stuff, you know, uh, from the chat room that also even interacts with our, uh, the Canboard software that we're using. <laughs> So we can even be able to uh, get reminders, and this is absolutely awesome. We're implementing right now rem a reminder system so that if there's a task on our CAN board that has been idle for a week, like for example, if we sent in a, a quotation to a customer and we haven't heard anything back, it literally injects pings into the chat room to remind us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it's really just turning this, this chat environment into sort of this you know, control room, <laughs> you know, for people distributed online to just be able to, you know, kind of do all the stuff that you need for the whole pen test process. And it's really powerful, and there's a lot of stuff you can do that, do with that. By the way, also with the uh, reporting stuff, this is also just a quick screenshot of, uh, of GitLab, uh, just so you can also see how some of the XML stuff is structured. And you can see findings, non-findings, uh, reports here. Anyway, that's why it, oh, oops. Probably a little bit less uh, interesting. But uh, in either case, uh, other things that we can do from the chat is uh, tools. So we've already implemented uh, several kinds of tools. Uh, of course, we try to open source them uh, after we build them. One example of a tool that we implemented uh, that's open source is a passive scanning tool. So basically what it does is it takes uh, the outputs of uh, Shodan and also of uh, well, basically, uh, well, it used to be scans.io, it's called census now. And what you can actually do is then basically put in uh, an IP address, and then basically it can spit out the information that it gets from the passive databases, you know, a sort of passive recon-wise to, uh, you know, be able to, uh, well, <laughs> tell, tell you, you know, before you even start doing active attacks, you know, what some of the problems might be. Because this is, of course, useful stuff to report to customers. You know, the great thing about this is if you can integrate this stuff with your chat environment, you can launch it from the chat, you know, it can run the scan, it can check the results into GitLab, you know. And then we're also working right now on basically some more basic scanning <laughs> uh, uh, stuff. We actually just, uh, well, made a partnership with sort of a large IT insourcing company who also sort of wants open source basic scanning. And we're actually trying to set up a, a bunch of things right now with a whole suite of the n typical compliance scanning kinds of tools like Nmap, uh, Nikto, uh, you know, just a, well, uh, SS, you know, uh, checking SSL certificates, you know, these kinds of things. Uh, so that we can basically do the scan, check it into GitLab, try and like script, you know, write, write some scripts to actually extract the stuff out that we need and then put it uh, in the XML template so that uh, when we compile, it can sort of put the right thing into the right place. So this is sort of the, the automation that we're busy, uh, busy working on. It's a work in progress, of course, <laughs> but uh, this is basically the direction that all of our stuff is, uh, is going. And of course, once it's built, uh, we're, gonna, we're planning on open sourcing it. Um, another really novel thing that you can do with uh, this kind of a uh, pen test chat ops environment is you can do something called red-blue pen testing. So what this is, is I took uh, with one of our customers a development team for uh, basically a software development team for a product, okay? And the software development team was a number of coders, a number of sysadmins, some DevOps people. And what I did is I split the team in half and I said, okay, half of you guys are the red team, half of you guys are the blue team. And each team is basically guided by uh, one of our professional pen testers. And we actually had the customer do their own pen test. So we basically turned it into kind of like a CTF competition. We gamified it. And we actually wrote our own scoreboard uh, that we used, of course, Hubot for, you know, the chatbot for. So that if, for example, somebody scored, you can see right now, uh, like for example here, a point for blue for uh, finding missing input validation, you know, and uh, so. And then what we had this thing is you could go, good job, blue. And then you can see now it says incremented blue, 24 points. And then it you know, shows you this like freaking awesome, you know, <laughs> rainbow unicorn. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and we basically just had a pool of images you know, from the interwebs of, of silly stuff that we could spit back at them, you know, <laughs> kind of to gamify it you know, for when they actually did something. And we basically, it was a one week pen test uh, that we did with the customer. Uh, we had ten, 10 of their folks, which of course is a huge time investment for them. But you have to remember this is a CTF exercise for them actually. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's kind of like a, a secure coding training, you know, in a way. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the week, uh, they had found 
40 findings in their own product. They had found a full attack chain through their own product. <laughs> you know, and the best part about it was they did it themselves. <laughs> you know, and, and during the wrap-up session with you know, these guys, one of them literally said, I am never going to look at coding the same way again. You know, and that is precisely what we want. And, and we were able to do this basically for the cost of a two-week pen test for them, you know, one week of actual pen testing, and of course one week uh, cleaning up the report that they made because they made an incredibly humongous mess out of it. <laughs> so it actually, of course, uh, just took us a week to, f to f fix up the XML so we could, uh, you know, <laughs> give them a decent looking report at the end. But, you know, that, that's, I mean, of course, the real time investment for them, of course, is the, is the time of, uh, you know, 10 people for a week. <laughs> but you hope that the education that they get out of it, of course, is, is going to bear its fruits, you know, uh, throughout their continued uh, software development process. But this is really the great thing about with the whole chat environment. I mean, it really puts you on an equal playing field, just on an equal level, you know, with your customers. And, and especially if you're an online geographically distributed team, like my company is, it means that, you know, the customers aren't even outsiders. It's, it's not like we're crowded in an office working together, <laughs> you know. It's like, you know, because our chat is our primary communications platform, it means that we can actually fully adopt <laughs> and fully be able to take along, you know, the customer in a way that it's almost like integrating them with our team. And that's only possible if you're working online in this kind of chat environment. I mean, even, you know, if you're working in an office and you tried inviting the customer to your office, I'm not even sure, you know, to what extent that would really be practical, you know. But uh, with this, you know, I mean, basically all they need to do is just have, uh, have Rocket Chat open and they can either passively observe or actively uh, participate. So this is all uh, really pretty great. So what else can we do? Well, you know, there's a whole lot of different things that you can integrate with, uh, with chat. One example for, uh, of something else that we did for a customer is we actually implemented a, uh, a spear phishing suite. Uh, we're still cleaning it up at some point when it's ready. Of course, I also want to open source this as well. <laughs> but uh, the point is that uh, what we're, uh, the way that it works is that we had uh, this, uh, a number of scripts so that what you could do is actually instrument, uh, create instrumented phishing emails. <laughs> And then what would happen is uh, the uh, phishing emails would then have links, of course, to something on a web server that could clack, click, that could track uh, uh, image views, and of course also that could track uh, clicks. And we actually had that tied in with our chat environment. So, and also the customer could even observe this in real time so that every time one of their employees either did an image view or clicked, we were able to see it in real time. <coughs> So, you know, and again, it's just giving a level of visibility <laughs> into what we're doing that is, you know, cool. I mean, quite frankly, <laughs> you know, it's actually, and it's fun because you can basically launch, launch it and then you can basically just sit there and watch, you know, the clicks come in, you know, and watch the image views come in. So that's, uh, that's actually really pretty, uh, pretty fun. Other things uh, that you can launch uh, from the chat environment, uh, I mean, of course, I already mentioned things like scanning and exploitation tools. So any of your standard, you know, uh, uh, scanner, scanning tools, basically, that you would use uh, for your pen testing, you can probably automate it with, with Hubot so that you can launch it from the chat. So Nmap, W3AF, SQL Map, Hydra uh, for brute forcing stuff. You know, this is all within the realm of, uh, of possibility. Some of the stuff we've already uh, implemented from the chat, other things are on our to-do list. You know, we're working on it, but in either case, this is what we envision. Things like recon, so who is Google? Uh, also, as a joke, we uh, implemented uh, let me Google that for you. <laughs> but that wasn't good enough, then we had to uh, implement a let me duck, duck, go that for you. <laughs> so, yeah, and our passive scanning suite. Things like cryptography, I mean, uh, things like hash cracking. I mean, why shouldn't we be able to launch, you know, hash cracking from, uh, from the chat? You know, it's just convenient. So uh, other things that we can do, email and uh, SMS integration. Uh, well, I mentioned spear phishing already. I mean, basically anything in your, in your operations where you would need to launch it and it, it makes it sort of helpful, <laughs> you know, if you can... Uh, Another thing also is that if you have a team working together, you know, you're not going to get the question of like, hey, what have you done already? 
you know? <laughs> and that makes also coordinating a team really, really easy because they can each just look in the chat room, see what the other person has done, look in GitLab. Oh, another thing I should mention is we also have Git, Git hooks in the chat room. So every time somebody does a commit to GitLab, we basically get a report of that. So both uh, you know, the pen testing team members as well as uh, the customer basically can see sort of blow by blow every single check-in that we're making. Which means that we don't even necessarily need to ask the question, have you already you know, done whatever? Because it's, it's just you know, it's obvious from looking. <laughs> <You know. laughs> so yeah, so it just makes stuff really easy. Anyway, so this uh, stuff is really at the core uh, of how we work. I mean, I think it's, it's a new workflow. It's an innovative workflow. And it's one that really is uh, working extremely well for us. Uh, I ho you know, hope we can continue to uh, you know, uh, be able to sort of package these things up nicely and be able to put it out there on GitHub. So hopefully anybody can use it. I mean, I would absolutely love to help my competitors. <laughs> you know, please use our tools. They're actually really quite awesome, <laughs> you know. And if, if if we as radically open security can also help to make uh, you know the rest of the industry, including our competitors, more awesome, then that that's even better. So uh, so please, uh, you know, have a look at our tools, uh, you know. And it's also open source. So if you guys do happen to use it and it's useful for you, and you think, hey, this is great, but I really wish there was also blank, you know, <laughs> I mean, put in a feature request or even, you know, if you do implement it, you know, share the love and, you know, <laughs> give it back to us, you know, <laughs> with a suitable open source license as well. I mean, it's basically just open source. So anyway, this is, uh, I guess, my talk. Uh, I hope you guys have thought it about, found it thought provoking and I would be extremely happy to answer any questions. installed it uh, basically on a VM. So I mean, it's not that we've uh, set up things uh, DevOps-wise yet uh, to kind of package it up uh, so you can just, uh, at some point I would really like for us to use some kind of, you know, Docker, Chef, Ansible, you know, <laughs> you know uh, thing so that we can basically make it easier for other people to set up. Uh, of course, right now, I mean, we're still sort of innovating it and figuring it out. So I mean, right now, we've still been installing everything manually. So. I'm also building it and trying to automate it. So maybe uh, we can share on that. OK, sure. Yeah, yeah contact me uh, after, please. <laughs> yeah. So no, but if anybody else is actually interested in trying out this stuff and, uh, and working with it, I mean, I would, I would certainly be very happy uh, you know, to, to work with you guys and think along with you guys. Because you know, I mean, ultimately, it's better for us, too. I mean, the more brains you have, you know, the cooler stuff winds up being. So. Are there any more questions? Nope. OK. Uh, well, well, I have a question. Yes. I'm not for this industry, but I'm just wondering, why would you make it non-profit? Why would I make it non-profit? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mention that because I was trying not to make this a, you know, a sales pitch. But uh, <laughs> you know, in, a, in, in a nutshell, the reason why I made ROS non-profit is because uh, the market leaders, at least in the Netherlands, for the security industry are quite commercial. And not everybody in the hacker community likes that, <laughs> you know, because hackers are very idealistic. I mean, much like uh, the open, you know, the hacker community has a lot of close ties with the open source community. We just want to make stuff better. We actually don't really care about profit and money, not usually, <laughs> you know, nor making it for our bosses. That's completely demotivating. Who cares? So, I <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> You know, so I wanted to set up something that uh, basically, if anybody got rich, I really wanted it to be uh, a charity, uh, you know, something for the community. So I decided that we would support uh, the NLNet Foundation. Uh, the NLNet Foundation is basically a foundation that's been around for 15 years. Uh, they've supported projects like Tor and EFF and GNU and Jitsi and academic research and you know all the kinds of stuff that like makes the internet better. <laughs> You know, and we set ourselves up as this thing called a fiscal fundraising in institution in Dutch, a fiscal fundraising instelling, which means that contractually we have to give 90% of our profits to a foundation, and NLNet is that foundation. It's actually a construction we stole from the churches. <laughs> 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 no, seriously. <laughs> because churches sometimes want to do commercial spin-offs, 
And, you know, and, then, and then they want to get the money tax-free back to the church again. Uh, a famous example of this in the Netherlands is a language institute called uh, Regina Chaley. Uh, and there's these uh, nuns that are called the Nonne van Feucht. <laughs> this is actually... This is actually the language institute where Queen Maxima uh, learned uh, and, and very much improved uh, her Dutch. You know, this is, this is actually an example of a, of a fiscal fundraising institution in the Netherlands. So we basically stole that idea, but we just decided to make NLNet our church. <laughs> so, that, that's, uh, so that's basically how we're, how we're set up. And, um, you know, and as, as for the rest of it, openness, transparency, open source. I mean, this was definitely just like an attempt, ROS is an attempt to reclaim, you know, security consultancy for, you know, the purposes of really making the world better through security. Because security is for the common good. It should be for the common good, you know. And if we can optimize for helping customers, you know, uh, our employees and society, <laughs> instead of optimizing for uh, shareholders, investors and uh, founders, <laughs> you know. I, I mean, ultimately, you know, we hope to create a vehicle that will be better for society in the end. Also on a meta level, the whole concept of a not-for-profit company, we figure if we can make this work in the computer security space, who knows, maybe in like four or five years, we might be able to also teach workshops, you know, explaining how other people can do fiscal fundraising institutions in other fields, like healthcare agriculture, <laughs> you know, so if we can just demonstrate this as being a new kind of social enterprise, you know, maybe it'll be a cool idea that other people can run with. Surprisingly enough, actually, as strange as this all sounds, because this is all really strange and weird and different, it, this has actually really been taking off. ROS is now two years old, but we already have 40 freelancers working together, and we've already had more than 30 customers. <laughs> That a third of which are repeat customers, <laughs> you know, and, and at least uh, probably you know two thirds of which are sort of the usual suspects in terms of like Dutch uh, corporate life, uh, government, you know, <laughs> you know, and the other third is sort of like little not-for-profit hippie organizations that uh, <laughs> we're willing to help for cost price. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so so that's kind of how it's uh, gone. You know, we're hoping to shake up the industry, you know, with the way that we're working. Because what we hope is that when the customer can look over our shoulder, we hope that they're going to get so spoiled <laughs> you know, by having that kind of view, that kind of visibility, that amount of knowledge transfer into their organizations that I am hoping that they are going to go, they're going to go back to our competitors and say, hey, Radically Open Security is offering this peek over our shoulder service. Can you guys do that too? Yeah, and then they're, of course, going to have a choice. You know, they can offer it or their customers might walk away, <laughs> you know? And in such a way, we're hoping to make the entire industry <laughs> more open and transparent. <laughs> you know, we're trying to offer that alternative and raise the bar for everyone, you know? And I, I hope that we can do it. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's enough about uh, the company. Anyway, thank you so much uh, for your time. And uh, if anybody has any more questions for me, I'd be happy to take them uh, afterwards. So thank you.